Okay, so you had lunch, you recuperated from this morning. If you were here earlier, you're right. Um, we're, right? Rather than having a long lecture about things up the front, what we want to do is get into it because we don't have a lot of time. We're going to go for 40 minutes, but we're going to, I'm going to show you a little bit of something. You're going to do it, and the judges are going to run around behind you and try to judge it. And then we just keep rolling on. So it's not like the previous years where we did a whole big thing and then we stopped. So, because otherwise we could never keep up with what's going on. I'm going to try to do it a little slower than I did this morning. And uh, this morning it got kind of crazy. So, if you're a participant, get up and let's choose a station. Now, you take a look at your table with the uh, black stuff. You'll find towards the middle of the table there's uh, drills. And with the drills are drill bits, uh, driver bits. You've got uh, two driver bits. We just gave you two, and they're easy to tell apart. The red Milwaukee one is a number eight Robertson driver, and the yellow DeWalt is a number six. So small screws is yellow, large screws is red. Trying to make it easy. And you've got all kinds of drill bits. The drill bits are a new kit. They're hard to get out, so don't cut yourself pulling bits out. So when we get to that. So let's move the slide along. I want to just show a couple things here. Back up to the drill drivers. OK, what's the difference between a drill and a driver? Because you, they often sold in a pair, where you actually buy both of them. The drill has a chuck on the end that takes round bits, but it can also take the hex. The driver has just a hex socket, so it can't take any round bits. It only takes hexes. Now, you can get drill bits that have a hex shaft. That's usually a waste of money because they break easily and they cost a lot. So <laughs> it's not the best tool to use for that. But everything that has a hex shaft will work for you. And it's usually an impact driver designed to really drive fast. And so it's a specialized tool. Today, we're working on the uh, drill driver here. And what we have are Milwaukee hammer drills with a clutch. And if you slide around the top, there's a clutch on there that we'll play with as we go. But it also comes back. That's for stopping when the screw needs to stop so that you don't drive it too far. And then you go over and you hit a drill sign. And then you get a hammer sign for impact. We're not doing impact this today, OK? But the other things you have on drill drivers is a variable speed trigger. And that's very useful. We actually use it more than you think, because it's used for some uh, techniques. And then we have, instead of a safety, it has a forward and a reverse. So if we can drive in screws, we need to drive them out, because they didn't, didn't get in the right place. So you've got to be able to go both ways. So that's our basic rundown on the drill itself. That's what we're going to be working with. If, now if we jump over to the next one, manual screwdriver. What I want you to do is we're going to pick up your big board you got there. You got a 4x4. Four four. And uh, Jessica, if you will come to my side up here. The Workmate is a reversal tool, but it can get confusing. This front table pops out, so you can put it in various positions. You want to put it in for what we want to do right now. We're going to put it in the second position so I can open it up big enough for my 4x4. Four four. So now you're in the first position, I think. You can open up and see if the 4x4 four four will go in. I don't think it will. Yeah, you've got yours right. And now you need to pop, take this, slide back, lift it out. Yeah, take it by the two sides, otherwise you get your fingers are in the way. And then put it in the second slot, and that way, we can just pop this in, and we got a hold of it. There's always a way somehow to do that. OK? Now, what we're going to do is, very first thing, there's a manual screwdriver on your table there someplace. I say that, and I don't see mine. Um, somehow, I didn't get a screwdriver. That was good. Let me borrow your screwdriver. Which is, that's the number eight. 
Now, I just want you to take a screwdriver. You've all the, you all look like you have a little bit of experience here. I want you just to drive a little bit in, just to prove how difficult that is. Okay? <laughs> just, and try to get the screw straight, because that's one of our objectives right now, is to get the screw to go in nice and straight. Now, your partner, while somebody's screwing in that screw, go ahead and screw in a bit. One of you screwing in the screw. Partner, let's set up the drill. Red shafted bit. That'll get us our number eight screws. You've got number six and number eight there. Let's take the number eights, the bigger ones. Oh, another thing about this, if we can get, well, let's see, my microphone will probably do the job. When you're cranking anything into this chuck, when you've got a good chuck like this one, at some point, it feels tight. If you go further, listen carefully. Did you hear that? OK, it actually clicks in. And that click is terribly important, because particularly if you have a round shaft. A round shaft, if you don't get to the click, it spins, it wears off the shaft. OK, so you want to go to that click. And that's one way to test if you've got a quality drill just in the store. See if you get one or several click, 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 click at the end. That's a good drill as you're going in. OK. Now, I used to have to teach how to hold drills, but then they put batteries on them, and the handles got smaller, and they had no more choice. But we actually had drills in the old days that had a finger plate position on the side. And we pulled the trigger down here. That actually helps you to drill and drive straighter by putting the finger out. Why? Because if I want to drive, let me see, I'll go right to the camera here. I want to drive the screw right in like that. Where my elbow is way out here, if I'm sitting here holding the trigger like that. And when I push, I skew it over. I sort of push to the side. If I put my finger out, I can't do this. My feet move. It actually moves my feet. And now my arm is in line, pushing straight forward. So I get a straight action. And it makes a big difference when running drills or even controlling screws. So if you really have trouble with controlling your driver, slide up tighter, point the finger out, and use the other tri trigger finger. OK? OK, let's just try driving a screw and going in. And I want to listen to you drive for a minute, and then we'll talk about what I hear. Because driving screws seems simple, but there's often some problems with it. And we're, you're trying to get it straight and square. Oh, this guy's doing. OK. So sometimes it pops out. Yeah, now that one, he had it in, and then it jumped out. It's jumping around on you, right? OK. So now pay attention here a minute. I just want to show you a couple things. With these square sockets, the best screws in the world, OK? When we come in. We should have this on drill, so it's not using the clutch right now. We come in. We have to stay in the socket. And when we're doing a heavy-duty job, like a big screw or a difficult situation, it tends to pop out of the socket. So the most important thing is we have a lot of weight right into the socket. Second is if you are having a popping problem, which comes whenever it's difficult to get it to go in, what you want to do is trigger it. You see that jumped out. Now. That sounds strange, but every time I stop the trigger, it reseats. You see, as we're going along, it's slowly crawling out of the socket. And if we reseat it, what you don't want is that grinding sound, because that grinds away the head of the screw, it grinds away the head of the driver. So, you, oh, by the way, you never hold anything like that for driving or hammering, because when you miss, you hit your fingers. You hold it up high so your fingers can get out of the way. You go very slowly and easily until it wants to start. OK? And then we're ready to go. Well, until it's sturdy. OK? You feel comfortable driving that in? That's a little bit of, but it really is the weight behind it. You're really putting on hard and driving in and just stop flush. 
Now, it's easy with a good screw to go right through the wood. So you've got to learn to stop the right place. Yeah, you see, it wants to jump away on you, right? Yeah. Let's go back to the slides. Okay. Now, stopping at the right place. Let's play for just a minute with this clutch. Spin that around to where it says two on the clutch. And in fact, let's say you got some smaller screws there that are the same head, but not very long. One inch screws. I want to drive this in and I don't want to go too deep. I want to be nice and flush. So I'm using the clutch. So I'm going to put it in with this. You see it works. There's nothing special happening. Coming in. Dropping off. Oh, the clutch is not kicking on me. That clutch should be kicking out. <coughs> See, that's the sound of the clutch that says it doesn't want to go anymore. It won't turn. If you go in on your big screw, it'll, the clutch will show you that. If I try to drive a big screw with that clutch, it's not going any further. So I can make the clutch Harder. I'll move up to six. Put it in. Ah, that six worked really well. So what you can do with it, depending on the screw and the wood, you can get just the right place with that. Looks like a number four might do it right for me. Uh, even that was going in too easily. Not showing off very well in this wood. But you can hear that clutch action at one point, and that's a way to control it to get it to the right place when you're going in. And if you run out of screws, you can unscrew some. <laughs> okay? So now let's just practice. Try driving a screw in and see how perfectly flush you can get it. And we'll have the judges look at how flush that really is. What we want is something about like that. Yeah. So we don't want it standing up proud. We want it perfectly flush. Now you may have to do it by going slowly, by doing it step by step, or by using the clutch. All of those things will help you to get down and stop in the right place. There's never one perfect answer to every thing that we're trying to do. Okay, on the slides. Okay, if you're ready to go on the next one, get the 5 16 inch drill bit. What we want to do is drill a larger hole. I'm not going to make a much larger hole, but uh, large enough that it's going to give us some problems with chipping. You ready? You ready? Everybody ready? Five sixteenths inch drill bit? Just over a quarter. Actually, I'd love it to be in between five sixteenths. I'd love it to be in between five sixteenths and a quarter, but we don't have that bit size. <laughs> okay? Oh, wait till you've all chucked up. You're up. You're up. You're up. He's cranking the chuck in. Okay, we're in. Okay, guys. When we go down, if you just try to, like, drill, for, if we wanted to drill right through this board, the bit's long enough to get through the other side. 
Okay? Just for the experience, and if you're used to this, it's not no surprise, just try drilling right through without changing anything. Go ahead, try it. Drill right through, but you'll see at some point, life gets difficult. You can usually force your way through. Okay, stop there. We don't want to burn the bits up, but that's a lot of work. What you really want to do is that before it gets like that, you see all this stuff that's plugged in here? Come on up here, Jessica. You see all that stuff? That's our problem. All of that stuff is plugging it up so that I can't go forward, and it smokes and it burns. So even if you don't clean out the flute, if we go down, come up, down, up, down. I got to turn this back to a drill. I had it on the chuck. Get it back to my drill. But that down up movement, that's what nets that go through. What I want you to do is now that we can drill a hole easily, I don't want to drill all the way through. I want to drill down most of the way, but not all the way through. But I want it absolutely square and straight into the wood without a drill press, okay? So what we're going to do to do that is one, if you're on a wall, it's almost easier. You make sure that your arm is lined up with it, not this. This will go crooked all the time. A left-hander, it'll go to the left. A right-hander, it'll go to the right. <laughs> You'll always find that skew. And because our hand is below the bit, it tends to go uphill when we do that. In the old-fashioned days, we actually could hold on behind here and push it straight in. So what we want to do is get as, as straight as possible, start it out before we worry about much of anything, just get the hole started, then we're not worried about it running around. And then we could actually stop and look and see if it looks square, looking here, looking there. And then once you're engaged, you're in. And then we're going to run that down a bit, and you're going to stick a dowel in there. You got a dowel on your table, and the judges are going to come see if the dowel looks square. Because what we want this to be is coming out straight. In fact, if you take your speed square on your table, you can check and see how well you're doing. Now, the dowel doesn't do a perfect measurement there because the hole's not tight, but you want to see how close you're getting. So I'm bending over that way a little bit. So I'm tending to go uphill a little on that one. You see, I was over that way. Take your square and see how good that's doing. <laughs> Did I get any better? Oh, I got a little better, huh? Like almost like I knew what I was doing. Now the judges are going to judge for how square you can get that dowel in there. But cleaning out the, the uh, dust and going in like that is what we need to do. So we'll let the judges run around and catch that. You want to give me the next uh, slide so I can see where I'm going? Julian? OK, <laughs> countersinking. Okay, what we're going to need for this one, you've got a piece of one by three, maybe straight. I'm going to roll my log over and get away from all those screws and splinters. Now, you need to dig into your toolkit and pull out two bits. You want to, let's see, we're going to be doing this with number, what do I got? 1164. Number eight screws. So we're going to run some number eight screws in here. 
Uh, actually, the six are the ones that are the right length. What if I do, 3.30 seconds? Do I have 3.30 seconds? Oh, yeah, 3.30 seconds, one eight. Okay. Okay. Next, we're going to do a countersink. Look at the graphic on the wall here. When we want to put two pieces of wood together, what you've got is that if we just run a screw through and there's threads biting here and threads biting there, it'll never squeeze up. It doesn't come together unless you really force things. And that's why most floors squeak, because somebody has screwed the plywood down with drywall nails or drywall screws instead of flooring screws. Flooring screws have no threads on, under the head, so they spin free in the top piece and they bite in the bottom piece. So what we need to do, if we want it to pull together like over there, is that we drill one hole through as a pilot hole, particularly if we're in wood that wants to crack. This wood doesn't crack, but if, if you had dry wood that wanted to crack, we do a pilot hole first, and then we do a bigger hole in the top piece, and later we'll do a chamfer for the flathead. But you need two different size screws. For the little screws that we have, that you have available there, the number six, the thin, skinny, long ones, two inches, you're going to need a uh, 364 and 964 drill bits. So if you look at your drill bits and find 364 and 964. So it gives you a pretty big difference between these two. Uh, you can't see it because there, there you go. That, that's better. Get this out of your way. Okay, so it's quite a bit. 364, 964. There are charts that tell you the exact right size. The idea is that with the larger drill bit, the screw just barely screws in. It could almost slide in with your finger. And with the smaller one, we just eliminate enough wood to stop it from splintering when we force the screws in. So to do a nice, uh, a really good job here, and particularly if you're trying to line stuff up, you might even want to use two drills. You should take the small one, the pilot bit, first. We're just going to do one hole here to show it. Take the pilot hole, and I'll actually drill right through both of them. The reason I like to do both of them is that I can find the hole then. Okay? So that one's already done. Now I take the larger one, and I go back through the top, and my screws all fall on the floor. <laughs> And I'll go through this guy just to make it easier. So the threads won't bite here. And as I turn the screw, the threads will bite down there and come in on the bottom. So let me just pop this out and get my little driver. The way we usually do this is reverse the drill, run it backwards while we're holding the chuck put it in, run it far, tighten it up. Now we're going to take this. Once you got one screw in, they're all going to be in the same place. But Now a way to cheat it is to run it through. See, that goes in very, very easily. It's not going to split anything. I found my hole. Put that down. Now you see the top? It spins. The head's not even sinking into the wood, but it's drawing the wood down. And so that will draw the wood right down snug until I get that into the right place. Now in soft wood, we don't need a countersink. In soft wood, it just sinks down. But now you can see here, we have a nice tight fit. So get, see if you can get at least one screw properly in like that, holding this tight so the judges can see that that's down snug and tight on, there, on the bottom, okay? That's the proper, this is a simplified thing because we're just showing it, but if you're really putting on flooring or something, they actually make bits that are three-stage bits that have a pilot hole, a clearance hole, and a chamfer on the top. And in one shot, you've made the hole and drive the screw. Okay. 
Okay, let you run on that. What's our next slide up there? So we keep this thing going. Clearance, pilot hole through, one by three, snugly down. Check the board is snug. Next slide. Okay, counters thinking for a flush. Once the judges have looked at your board, pop this stuff out, set it aside, and we're going to pick up a piece of melamine. We'll go back to the clearance hole that we had. The bit that you draw out. Okay, we're all set with a one by three down. If the judge has been by. You should have a bit that I need to borrow here. Is there the countersink? Well, I don't see the countersinks. I got Alex. Do we have the countersinks any place? The counter sinks, the little tapered ones? We don't have them, huh? They got lost somewhere along the way. Okay. Okay, we're not going to have time to run around and find that counter sink. I just want to show you something. When you're working in something like melamine, if you want to drive a screw into it, I'll just show this to you. If you look up on the top here, you want to drive a screw in. It's hard to get it started. Once it gets started, it usually cracks the plastic. And if you try to go down flush, you can't make it. OK? So to stop all this sort of bundling up on the top, what we'll do is that that's going to be a problem. So here, what you need to do is drill a hole first in the melamine so it's still smooth on the top. Now, they make countersink bits, and we have six of them walking around the hotel here someplace that I don't know where they even ended up at. Um, <laughs> but you can take a larger drill bit. Well, like even this one will do it. Take, take a really large drill bit and very gently just touch the top, and you have a countersink. Okay? Now, they make special drill bit that looks like a pyramid that is made to do that. But that'll allow you to come in with your, with your bit. The nice thing about the, uh, the hex drivers is the bits change faster. <laughs> That'll allow you in melamine to come in, put that in, and actually get it down flush. You have to make that a little deeper just to get it the right depth, and it comes down flush without breaking the plastic. 
Okay? We were going to do that, but I can't find the uh, countersink bits that we had. So we'll skip that because we're running out of time. Anyway, next, next item. Oh, that was, the, that was the last one that we were going to be testing with. So we might as well take a little time. Yes, we do have time. Let's try to do that. Let's go back and do exactly what I did. What we want to do is take one of these bits, doesn't matter which one, let's take, for instance, the smaller of the two bits that you had out a little earlier, the smallest one. And in your melamine, So we get this bit, the smaller of the two bits that you had out there, you want to know what size it was? It was, uh, what are we on? 3.30 seconds, I think, was it? Yeah, 3.30 seconds. Take the 3.30 seconds inch bit and drill a few holes. So we'll just drill a few holes like that. Okay. Straight holes, 3.30 seconds inch bit. Okay, so you got the little bit there, and you drilled some holes. Everybody up? You're up. Now you're going to take the 3 eighths of an inch bit, and we're going to cheat it. Now, it's more aggressive than a real countersink bit. The countersink bit is better controlled, but this will get you by to make it work, but you've got to be delicate. <laughs> Treat it like a lady. You could always do this one first. Jessica, come see me. Or I guess we got the camera up there too, don't we? You could go without the drill hole at all, but you see we could make some holes here, which is basically making a place for the head of the screw so that when we're going to put the screw in, you can actually see if the screw is going to fit nicely if that if you got enough of it taken out okay so you got those now put your 3 8 in and we'll come down on top of the holes you drilled but it's barely touching huh you can go through far too far very easily but it protects the plastic top from splintering or buckling up. And then we can drive those in. And the judges are going to see if you can get some screws in there flush to the melamine. Now, by the way, when you're trying to put screws in flush, if they're not square to the wood, they won't go flush. And you see I'm struggling with that one because there's no pilot hole. So the pilot hole definitely helps to get in and go down. The uh, short, fat ones. <laughs> 
number eight one inch because that'll give you threads to hold on to the melamine <laughs> well, I'll show them what it looks like. We found the countersinks. Okay. Here we got a present for you. Jesse, Jessica, let's, this is the real countersink bit. Alex just found them for me. So that's the countersink bit that is made for doing this specific job of coming in and making a very clean countersink hole where that will just drive the screw right down in nicely. So that's what it looks like. And there you get a smooth finish. So it's clean around and smoothed down. Do we see that? I guess we'll just leave it there. They got a good shot of that? Now, while we're doing the judging, I want to show you one, a couple other tricks. If you go to the next slide, back up, back down, that's the one I want. That's a weird looking drill bit that I want to show you because there are lots of specialty bits and specialty things available. You're not going to be doing this, but the drill bit is the, the one on the right in the picture is the commercial one that's made for this. The one on the left is a spade bit that I shaved down to match because I didn't have the right size one day. And what it does, well, first of all, I'll show you what we, can, what we accomplish with it. <coughs> you want to cut a hole in a corner for an electrical wire that comes in here and out over there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So with the regular bits, you can't change angle like that. And if you come up and look at this later, you'll see it's actually curved on the inside. It's not two straight holes. So you're fishing a wire or a pipe or anything else is not a problem. So the way that works is very simply, well, this is all splintered up on that side. We'll go back to the one I cut. Uh, you're better off over here. I love having a camera that just goes any place I want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on this face and go straight in. You got your judging done? Yes. Okay. We actually have two minutes left. <laughs> now, I'm going to cut in so I'm well seated and I'm started into the wood. Not very far. Now normally, once you're in that far, you can't move. But this bit is round on the back side. So I can shift it over. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to make sure I get my chips coming out. Pull the chips out, otherwise you'll get stuck. And we made it around the corner of the post, okay? So that's just one that very few people know that exists and can help some jobs very nicely in terms of getting around. Because when I drill here and drill there, and then you try to fish something, it doesn't want to go. <laughs>
So we have results on judging. Yeah. So first prize goes to team number two. Number two. <laughs> hey. What what time's the show this afternoon? The next one. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. <laughs> well, we'll give them a little bit of time to get out to the exhibit. And back, so in about 15, 20 minutes, come back. We're going to take on <coughs> both the, uh, the jigsaw that you've got on your table and this little baby as well. Show you a couple of tricks with the demolition. Just a couple of them that you may not know. Um, but this is actually the granddaddy of this guy. And, uh, but they both have a lot of things in similarity. A lot of things you can do with this that you don't think about. Like you can even cut leather, so you will be cutting leather or similar to leather and uh, show you how that works. But uh, usually the teeth get in the way. So I'll see you in about uh, 20 minutes and we'll get on with the next one. Thank you.